John 4, verse 34 says this. My food, said Jesus, is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. That means that the Father started it, he created it, and Jesus has come in to complete everything and reconcile everything so that he would be lifted up and glorified. Do not say, do you not say four months more and then the harvest? I tell you, open your eyes and look at the fields. They are ripe for harvest. Everyone needs Jesus Christ. I need him, you need him. Everyone outside these walls is in the same place. Do not say four months in the harvest. Now is the time. This Easter is the time to share the gospel, to share with friends about Jesus, to help them discover the truth, the truth about God and the truth about our lives. Even now, the reaper draws his wages. Even now, he harvests the crop for eternal life so that the sower and the reaper may be glad together. Thus the saying, one sows and another reaps, is true. Tonight is about sowing and reaping. We can sow until the cows come home, and we will never get righteousness. But Jesus sowed his life so that we could reap the benefit. That's what that scripture is saying. Tonight, now, if we sow our life back into Jesus Christ, saying, you know what? I can't save myself. I can't, I can't sow into my dream. I can't sow into this world and try and save myself in some miraculous way. The only way salvation is going to come is through Jesus Christ. And we now have sown nothing and we reap the benefit of Jesus' life being sown on the cross. Unless a seed falls to the ground and dies, it will not produce a harvest. Jesus was that seed. He was the first of many. He is the second Adam. He is now our way into resurrection life. He is now our way into eternal living. There is no other way. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. Tonight, we get to reap if we repent, if we come back to him. God and just say, I need you. I need you more than anything. I'm gonna pull down everything else, all my little gods, all the things that I worship, all the things that have pulled my heart into the wrong place, the the trying to prove myself in any other way. This week, my best friend that I grew up with, his father passed away in a horrible plane crash. That man... Bob Baranaskis gave me my first job, coached me uh, in soccer for about six years, uh, blessed me with a snowboard when I first started, taught my parents how to snowboard, opened his home to us all the time. And on Sunday, he was uh, flying a World War II uh, fighter plane and uh, he went into a spin and it, uh, it, it didn't make it. it, hit the water, thing blew up, and they can't even find the body right now. I didn't know what to think when my friend called me. He was inconsolable, he was, he was weeping, and I mean, what do you, what do you say? <laughs> what do you? I just said, I'm, I'm sorry, man. I'm just, we cried together, and there's not much else I could do but weep with him and just pray for him and he has never um, been to church but this January he went to Awakening New York and, and something's happening in his life and I know God's going to work through this horrible, horrible situation but as I prayed and as I went on, I went to a headland just to think about what's going on and just, just pray about, pray for the family and pray for the friends that are affected by this death. I felt the urgency in my heart to share the gospel. I felt an urgency to share the good news. I felt an urgency not to worry about what I'm gonna eat or what I'm gonna wear or 
any other stuff, but that the harvest is ripe now and people need to hear the message of Jesus Christ now. And this Easter is more than a long weekend. This Easter is more than eating chocolates. Every day of our life is more than making a buck and going home and watching TV. Our life is more. We have a choice. We have a decision to make. We have to see that Paul is unfolding to us that the choice is Jesus. The choice is him. And out of that place, we will see people's lives impacted and changed by the gospel in Jesus' name.